One to go up top, dumps it off across the middle, Fournette. What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here for another episode of Treeb Talks. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and I know last night I did not post a video, and that was the first weekday upload that I missed in a long, long time, and uh, it's for good reason. Uh, I mean, it's nothing bad, obviously, but, you know, your boy has a job. <laughs> you know, I have two jobs. I work at a newspaper and a news station, and I actually had to write my first column for that newspaper that I've ever written, and uh, if you don't know what a column is, it's basically uh, an opinion piece. I also covered a game yesterday as well, and I had to replace my tire yesterday, too, because of the snow. My tire popped. You know, yesterday... Yesterday was a busy, busy day, and I hope you guys understand the reason I did not make a video yesterday. But I'm back, and today we're going to keep it simple, a simple little video, and today we are talking AAF picks, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, if you haven't already, and you like money, you can enter the Troop Talks AAF Pick'em Contest. All you have to do is comment down below your picks. Make sure you are subscribed, and you will be entered for a chance to win $100 via the Cash App, a $100 Amazon gift card, or a pair of Apple AirPods. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, this is Treves AAF, week number three picks. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are already in week three. We're two weeks away from being halfway done with the AAF regular season. Um, you know, we're two weeks in. The offensive play hasn't really stepped up. Maybe in week three is when this offensive uh, explosion is supposed to uh, kind of come out a little bit. Of course, last week, San Antonio and Orlando had a really good offensive uh, game. Hopefully this week, more of those are to come. So to kick things out, the first game on the slate, we have the Arizona Hot Shots taking on the Salt Lake Stallions at 3 p.m. Eastern. That is 2-1, 12 p.m. Pacific time here in Idaho, and that will be on Bleacher Report Live. Now this depends on if the, if the Stallions have Josh Woodrum at quarterback, I think the Stallions will pull up the upset. However, if they have Austin Allen or even Matt Lenahan back there, I think the Hot Shots get it done. However, I think that if um, Josh Woodrum is able to come back healthy, I think he will be able to lead the Stallions team to an upset victory over the Hot Shots. I mean, you look at what the Stallions have done this season. They've been relatively close in both of their games, and they've had an opportunity to win both of them. They just did not really have their starting quarterback throughout most of the game, and that's kind of been... That's kind of been the uh, the catalyst for the Stallions team as quarterback play. And last time they played the Hot Shots, it was a close game hitting into halftime. But, of course, Woodrum had to leave with an injury. So maybe if he plays this whole entire game and uh, he you know shows why he's a starting quarterback and he puts together something impressive, you know, this, run, this running attack as well keeps uh, impressing week in and week out. I think the Stallions have the opportunity to take this one. I might actually take the Stallions to upset the Hot Shots. Uh, this Saturday. It's at Salt Lake as well. It's their first home game, and you got to imagine if anybody has a real true home and field advantage, it's going to be the Salt Lake Stallions, especially this time of year, because you know it's going to be chilly, and it's going to be snowing. And, you know, a team from Arizona, and, you know, basically a whole roster of local guys that are from the area in Arizona, they aren't going to like to go and play in the snow and the cold in Utah. And, you know, people in Salt Lake, that are, you know, originally from the Salt Lake area, they're not going to care because they're used to this cold weather. Uh, and I think that they're going to be able to perform, and I think they're going to be able to take this game against the Hot Shots. So I'm going to be taking the Salt Lake Stallions to upset the Hot Shots. Coming up next, we got the Memphis Express taking on the Orlando Apollos. This game is going to take place Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific on NFL Network. Now, the Express seem to get a lot of primetime game slots for a team that is really bad. <laughs> you know, a team that's not great. Uh, they sure do seem like they get the uh, the NFL Network. In fact, uh, let's see, they got the NFL Network game week two and week three. So, you know, the Memphis Express is probably one of those teams that the AAF really thought had a chance to be something special, but unfortunately was let down. And they're going to be facing the best team in this league right now in the Orlando Apollos. You know, And if Garrett Gilbert continues his dominance, there's no reason why the Apollos shouldn't just come in and blow out the Memphis Express. This is also at Orlando. 
Um, it's going to be very interesting, though, to see how well the Express does play. Because, you know, last week they took on the Hot Shots, gave them every single inch that they could handle. But this week, uh, facing the Apollos, and they re it's all it all comes down to quarterback play. And that's how it is for a lot of these 0-2 teams, as it comes down to quarterback play, how well um, either Hackenberg's going to do. And, you know, take a gamble on Mettenberger, damn it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you Zach Mettenberger will save the Express. I'm telling you that. He hasn't had the opportunity. But, you know, as long as Hackenberg's in there and he's facing the Apollos, I'm going to take the Apollos. I'm going to take the Apollos by quite a bit as well. Um, like I said, Memphis on the road. Orlando is the home team. It's going to be a struggle for the uh, Express throughout this game. Next up, we got the Birmingham Iron taking on the Atlanta Legends. I'm going to take the Iron, especially because this defense is way too hot to handle. It's going to be on Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern on CBS Sports Network. Um, man, Beham in Atlanta, dude. That's uh, that's easy. I'm taking Birmingham because this defense has been solid all year, and Matt Sims is not going to get the job done for the Atlanta Legends. This is the team that I think might be the worst team in the league. I think uh, once, these, once the uh, Legends and the Express match up, you're really going to see who the worst team is, but uh, they really, really haven't been able to do much of anything. You know, last week, really putting themselves in a situation where they could have won, but some bad play calls towards the end of the game really fucked them at the end. And then, you know, they got blown out <coughs> week one against the Apollo. So, you know, they've, they've had a rough go of it. So let's see if they maybe can turn it around a little bit against this iron team. Uh, Luis Perez as well. He's coming off of uh, not so great of a week last week against Stallions. Uh, hopefully he could come around and show why he is one of the uh, better quarterbacks in this game as well. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to take the iron to defeat the Atlanta Legends. Coming up next, the main event. The main event of the AAF Week 3 is on Sunday at 5 p.m. Pacific Time, 8 p.m. Eastern on NFL Network. That is the San Diego Commanders taking on the San Diego fleet and i think this game goes somewhat like the last time these two teams faced i think san antonio takes a victory um i think san diego you know puts himself in a situation where it's kind of close but it's not really close it's going to be a typical aaf game is what i'm saying uh the halftime score is going to be nine to three nine to three is going to stand up until about three minutes left in the fourth quarter where one team magically scores two touchdowns from out of nowhere and in my opinion it's gonna be san antonio and they're going to end up taking this game. That's what a typical AAF game is. You know, 9-3 to three in the halftime. And then, you know, it, towards the third quarter, that lead extends to 12 or, you know, 15 or something. You know, not a lot of... Not a lot of points are going to be scored in this game. Um, not necessarily because of the defenses, but I think the offenses uh, have both have kind of struggled a little bit. And, you know, you really saw the struggles last time these two teams played. We'll see what these teams uh, decide to attack each other on, whether that be the run game or through the air. Uh, Philip Nelson locked in as the fleet's uh, full-time starting quarterback. He came in midway through the third quarter, I believe, last week. When, I mean, last time these two teams played. So uh, it's going to be interesting. But the Fleet is a team that I'm not sold on. The Commanders are one of the teams I really like to root for. So uh, it's an easy one for me there with San Antonio uh, taking the victory over the Fleet on the road. And I think it will be kind of close, but it'll be one of those low-scoring, not-so-close games. And that was my AAF Week 2 picks. What did you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check the links down below as well. Don't forget, you can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Or like, uh, like follow me on Instagram, at Trey Von Pixley. Also, if you guys are curious, want to read my two articles, those will be in the description as well. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. I drop new content on this channel six days a week. Ain't nobody out working me. Demonstrate straight facts. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great day.